Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hey, doing great. How are you? I'm doing wonderful, wonderful. I see, I, I didn't get the memo with the shirts, man. Those are some really awesome shirts you got on. And I, I'm i on the same group text, though. What's going on? What's up with that? <laughs> Sorry, we knew you had to wear your uniform, but oh, it God. is an indication of the exciting week we have coming up. Yes, yeah. We have a very, very huge uh, game coming up this weekend. And it's matter of fact, it's called America's Game. So uh, all of America will be tuning into it. So and we get a we get a chance to go to the game this weekend. So, man, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm just not looking forward to this. This cold weather that they say is going to be there and it's rain. So, um, yeah, it's but other than that, man, I'm ready to see some good football. And our, our next guest is all too familiar with this legendary rivalry. Uh, we get a chance to chat with him today and his experience in this classic game. So without further ado, Julie, please introduce today's guest. Today's guest is a Navy football legend. He went 4-0 as the starting quarterback for Navy against Army, was fifth in the Heisman Trophy voting in 2015, and finished his college career with an NCAA Division I record 88 career touchdowns. He also played in the NFL for Baltimore, Washington, and Seattle, and he is fired up for America's game. He says he's going to be there, too. And this weekend's matchup between Army and Navy, please help me welcome Keenan Reynolds to Chief Chat. Oh, yeah. Hey. So happy to be here. Awesome, awesome, man. So, Kenan, it's great to meet you. It's a pleasure to have you join us today. Can you let us, our viewers, know where you're joining us from today? Yeah, I'm live and direct in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm actually in the office right now, uh, so in between, in between work to come talk to you guys and, and get excited about this game. Oh, thank you, Keaton, for making time to to break away from work and, and chat with us for a little bit. It means a lot to us, and it means a lot to the Chief Chat viewers out there. So you played high school, or you played football at a small high school in Tennessee, and then you came to the Naval Academy. What made you decide to go Navy? Um, well, Ashley Ingram, he's the uh, run game coordinator right now for the Naval Academy came down and saw me after a spring practice uh, when I was like a junior, end of my junior year. And he just told me, hey, you know, we don't care how tall you are. We just care that you can run. And they said I could play quarterback. And it got me excited. And then I started doing my research on the military, on Navy, and on the opportunities that come from being uh, a midshipman at the Naval Academy, the, the exposure you get, the opportunity to serve your country, the top tier academics as well as the alumni network, which now that I am an alumni um, has been amazing. Um, it's helped me helped me get the job that I got now. I mean, the network is strong and I'm so happy for the opportunity that they, they gave me. Excellent. And you alluded to this, but your height in high school kept many colleges from recruiting um, you for quarterback. So did that inspire you to work even harder to prove them wrong? No doubt. Um, being in Navy, you get to play against these schools, these major Division One schools. I played against Ohio State. I played against Notre Dame multiple times. Uh, played against Pittsburgh. Played against Memphis, a team that recruited me and wanted me to change uh, positions. So, like, every time I went into those games, I had a chip on my shoulder. And uh, I just wanted to find a way to prove that I belonged on the same playing field as the people that, that we were going up against. And, and we keep talking about height. How, how tall are you? Because it – you you look pretty pretty tall to me, well, and it might be because well, yeah. Well, how tall are you? Five ten. Oh man, that's yeah, that's 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 tall. But I, I guess I'm seeing I'm seeing, but I'm seeing a lot of uh, you know quarterbacks like Baker Mayfield and and what's Russell. Uh, oh man, Seattle quarterback. Uh, they're on the shorter. You know, uh, Kyler Murray. He's he's a little shorter. So. Uh, 
you know, I know that they got the prototypical six four quarterback, but uh, you know, y'all y'all got some giddy up behind y'all. So uh, you know, you 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 have your advantages as as a smaller person uh behind the, especially you get lost behind all those big offensive linemen and stuff. So it probably works out to your advantage a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's crazy because like when I was in school, uh, I think like my freshman year it may have been Russ's senior year maybe at Wisconsin, and so like. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't in style yet to have a yeah a, yeah a quarterback but then Russ came on the scene won a Super Bowl and then like you said Kyler Murray Baker Mayfield I mean quarterback for Alabama right now Bryce Young is only six foot so I mean like you kind of seeing a, a a wave of these not the prototypical six four but very maneuverable with strong arms and so I was a little I was a little behind the curve but nonetheless <laughs> what. Well, Hey, so we we already called you a, a Navy legend, so we're just gonna call you a trailblazer now. You you're a short quarterback tra trailblazer. <laughs> Kick down the door first. <laughs> exactly. You, you you walk for everybody else can run. So <laughs> so uh, no we it mentioned that you you uh you beat the army four times in a row, man. That's uh can you talk a little bit about the rivalry and what it means to uh to to each to each team and kind of lead us up to the to vibes on game day. Yeah, I mean, it's the pinnacle of the season, right? You could go 11-0, and lose to Army, and still feel like you failed at your season. <laughs> you could be 2-9 and two and two and nine and be Army, and things don't feel so bad when you go into the offseason. So, you know, it's when you first walk on campus at, at Indianapolis, like, and you're chopping around Bancroft Hall as a plebe, you're screaming out, be Army. Be Army, sir. Like, that's, that's said, like, 100 times a day at least. So – it's something that's ingrained in us. It's something that's part of the culture there. And you take a lot of pride in it. You get to wear your stars on your Letterman cardigan. I mean, it's just it's just a part of a, a way of life at the Naval Academy. So this game is massive, but it's really important for the, the players playing on both sides, really, to just kind of make it what it is, a football game. You know, the, the, the pageantry, the, 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 the tradition, all of that's cool, and it's great for the fans. But when you're playing the game, you can't think about any of that. You can't get wrapped up in the march ons and the flyovers and the forms. You got to be concerned about, you know, making sure that schematically you're prepared and you know what your assignment is and you go out and execute it. Well, so I know I know you guys come on campus and talking about beat the army, but you, you know I'm, I'm an airman, I'm an American airman, and, and y'all don't say nothing about the Air Force game. Like y'all, it's, it's just. It's just a, a normal situation, or can we can the Air Force get a little little rivalry going on with the Navy? Listen, Air Force is, just, I mean, it, it's it's still Army is Army, but Air Force, you yeah, got yeah. we got to beat you to get the trophy, right? So yeah. when we play you guys. Usually, it's early October, first weekend of October. It's a big deal to us. May not may not garner as much national attention as Army Navy game, but I can assure you, those guys in the locker room um, are very. Uh, uh, Acutely focused on beating the Air Force, and you know, for a while, at least when I was there, we were coming off a loss to Air Force my freshman year, and we were trailing on the road before you know we ended up coming back and winning that game. I mean, that that changed the trajectory of our season. So, like these service academy games, can really take your season from disappointment to success overnight. So, Keenan, what is your favorite? Army Navy game memory. Is there one particular moment that stands out? And what are you looking forward to about this weekend's game? Um, looking back on it, honestly, the the best moment was probably in the snow my sophomore year. Now at the time, it was less than ideal. I was extremely cold. I don't think I've ever been that cold in my life. Um, <laughs> pretty sure I, uh, shivering on the sidelines. I remember after the game, I was in like full hoodie, sweats, beanie, under like three layers of covers, trying to warm up at the back of the hotel. So it wasn't fun that after the fact, but looking back on it, that's that's pretty awesome. Not too many people can say they played in a snow game. Um, just up for this weekend, I'm just really excited about seeing some of my old brothers um, and classmates um, that I, that have been kind of all over the place, and you know everybody tries to reconvene for Army Navy. I'm just excited to be able to take in the sights and sounds. Um, like I said earlier, that's something I wasn't really concerned about when I was playing, and I've only been to one 
Army, Navy in person where I wasn't playing, and that was in Baltimore five years ago. So I'm just excited to be back in that environment to, to, to relive what it felt like to be a player on the field at the time. And then uh, this year, the game is being played in the Meadowlands this year instead of Philadelphia. So what do you think about that? Are you looking forward to that? I think it's the, the best place to play um, because of the year. You, you know, we're, we're 20 years out of 9-11. You think about the people, the, the, the men and women that are at the academies and what they're going on to do. Um, I just think it makes sense to have that game in New York um, as we commemorate the lives lost uh, on that on that fateful day, you know, just over 20 years ago. So I'm excited to be in the, the MetLife Stadium. I've been there before. It's a great stadium. It's going to be a great environment. Um, I think it's going to be one of those Army-Navy games that you kind of write down in the memory books. That's awesome. And so um, as a quarterback, you're you're obviously the leader of the team. So what was your leadership style? Uh, especially consider you're pretty much a team full of leaders. No doubt. Um, and that's interesting as you, as you're around a bunch of other people who are considered leaders, who are going to be leaders, you can't really fake the funk. You have to be yourself. You have to be authentic. And so I knew that I wasn't a rah-rah guy. I'm, I'm pretty laid back reserved. And so I just tried to use my leadership by doing. So if I was trying to get my people to do something, I, I would be right there in the trenches doing it too. Um, because I, I never, I never thought that leading was like pointing the finger. I thought that leading was like actually being in front, you know what I'm saying, leading the way. So that's kind of my mentality, and that's the mentality that I had when I was playing. It's to just do what I said I was going to do, care about the people that I'm working with, really understand them, what makes them tick, what do they need, and then lead by example. Yeah, and I gather that you're a pretty, pretty laid-back individual from this interview, uh, but – I'm trying to see, is there like a switch when the, when you get on the field? Is there something like, does the monster come out at some point? Uh, or, uh, and, and you, then you, cause I, I think I get a chance to, you know, calm down when I go home, but when I'm at work, I gotta go, I gotta turn the switch on. And, and so this is me turning the switch on right now. Uh, but uh, yeah. I was wondering like for, for people that are naturally like, like reserved and laid back once they get on the field, I'm sure it, it, it's another, it's another version of yourself out there. Yeah, it's certainly like a release to me. Um, ball is like, a, it don't matter how bad the day was in class or whatever happened. Like when I got on the field, like I kind of blanked out. You know what I'm saying? That That's a feeling that's really hard to replicate, just kind of being in the moment completely and, and 100%. So like for me, I just became very, uh, I, don't know, I let all my aggression out, played hard. Still didn't really do a lot of talking on the field. Just the way, just I just tried to, exuded with my body language and how I felt. Um, but playing, there's nothing like it. It's just, I'm a super, super, super competitor. And so that was, being on the field was a time where I could just be that fully without having to be, you know, stepping on toes. Like the whole point of the game is to step on toes. So yeah. I, I enjoy being able to kind of free myself and play. And then after you uh, finished at the Naval Academy, you were drafted in the sixth round of the NFL uh, by Baltimore. And with your commitment to the Navy still ahead of you, had, did you ever envision you'd get a chance to play in the NFL? Well, the year before, we had uh, had a teammate who kind of went through the same situation. And he was given an opportunity to play. Didn't really know what was going to shake out for me. Um, had been told at the time, you know, his situation would not be replicated uh, with with yours. So we would have to find something kind of unique and different. And so I just kind of trusted the process. I knew that what was supposed to happen was going to happen. Uh, very stressful nonetheless, but uh, I think being drafted really helped my situation. Um, and so fortunately was able to, to get an opportunity to pursue it wholeheartedly and, and go where I needed to go. Excellent. Uh, so glad to hear you say that, you know, you were going to be where you were supposed to be. And then when you went to the NFL, you converted to wide receiver. You kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier. So how were you able to make that transition after playing quarterback for so long? It was tough. That's probably one of the toughest things I've ever done when it comes to sports. Um, you you kind of think going in, I was like, yeah, I, I can do this. Like I have the 
I'm, I'm athletic enough to play it. But then you start to get around these people who have been playing these positions their entire lives. And you see what goes into it, the amount of work you got to put in. It's just different. And so uh, it took a lot of trial by trial by fire, a lot of uh, uh, bumps in the road, but I learned a ton. It was a great experience. Uh, I met a lot of great people that I still talk to today. So, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world. But so you did mention, you know, coming out of high school that you, um, you know, colleges were talking, I think you said Memphis wanted you to change at that point in time. I, and, I, and I know kind of like Lamar Jackson is, was, was hell bent on saying I'm a quarterback and I'm not doing anything besides being a quarterback. I'm sure, like you said, I'm sure it's tough to kind of let that go uh, at, at any point in your career, especially if you've been doing quarterback your whole entire life, basically. Yeah, it's tough, but the difference here was they were writing me a check to do it, so I kind of was like, "Hey, yeah. <laughs> that's what it's going to take to collect the, the the money." Then so be it. You know, I got to do what I got to do to defeat the family. So I was okay with it. Um, I learned to love it. I actually enjoy playing receiver. Um, I wouldn't say more than being a quarterback, but I, I think I would have rather play receiver in the NFL than play quarterback because even though those guys get paid a lot, their job is very tough, and it's that's why I, I learned firsthand why guys don't really make it in the NFL. Like finding a quarterback in the NFL is very difficult. So um, I think it was truly a blessing in disguise to be able to switch to a receiver and just kind of do what I had been doing, uh, albeit in a different kind of way um, at Navy in the NFL. Gotcha. And receivers, you know, it, I know you're a quiet guy, but receivers are normally the one that's talking all the noise. So they probably the loudest uh, of all the positions in, in, in the NFL. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely some trash talk going on on the perimeter, you know, with the DVs and stuff. Yeah, I can't. I, it's not really safe for work to talk about what we. What, what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it, it's it's a blast. Tell me more. Man, just, no, I'm just kidding. It's just competing, you know, and and you got another guy who essentially trying to feed his family, and you trying to feed your family. Like it's the ultimate competition, right? So yeah. I, I love it. I think it's I think it's great. I think it brings out the best in people. It shows you who you are as a person. You can really reveal who you are when you're in those type of situations and you learn where your shortcomings are, where you need to fix, where you need to, to work on and improve on. So um, you, you gotta love it. Oh yeah. So uh, you got a very, very captive audience today. You got uh, soldiers, airmen, sailors, Marines, guardians, and Coast Guard members and military families watching from all over the world. Uh, do you have any words you'd like to share with uh, our, our heroes? No doubt, really just appreciate all you all do the time, the sacrifice, um, can't thank you enough. I have friends that are currently underway, that are in the Middle East, that are all over the world. So 100% sympathize and understand what it's like. Uh, praying for your safety and can't wait for you guys to get back home. And Keenan, you have a lot of fans out there too. We have Chief Benjamin, people watching from all over. And I'm going to just turn to our Facebook feed and read some of the comments to you. So we have Nanette. She says, Aloha blessings. She's watching from Holloman Air Force Base. And we have um, Kenny Hornback is watching. He says, Go Air Force beat Louisville. <laughs> no thoughts Air on Force. how he feels about this weekend's <laughs> game. <laughs> and then. Um, we have Chris, who is watching from Dallas. Chris says, Roger Staubach and Keenan are Navy goats, not the mascot. So that's a funny <laughs> comment, I think. I appreciate the love. <laughs> and Kiki Holloman has a question. She wants to know what some of your pregame rituals were back when you were playing. Oh, wow. I had some crazy – well, I wouldn't say crazy, but, like, I was definitely superstitious. So, like, I – I had to put the right shoe on before the left. Um, I had to wait until like 10 minutes before warm-ups to put my shoulder pads on. I had like a specific song I had to listen to that changed every year. So like whatever my favorite song was in that given year, that was a song I had to listen to before I went out. Um, I had to eat the same meal. I didn't want to change up my meals. I think I did like chicken and like spaghetti, pasta, and I would do that every every week wouldn't want to change no variety i really wasn't a, a hungry person i barely i had to like force myself to eat before the game so like 
I had a few quirky things that I had to do to like make sure that I felt secure and ready to rock. But and looking back on it, it's really weird and silly. But at the time, like it felt <laughs> quite necessary. <laughs> so, so what was your what was your song during the snow game? The snow game. Oh man, I I have no idea. I can't even. Remember <laughs> <what I'm doing. laughs> I think I was just thinking about how to stay warm that entire time. Gotcha. I remember watching that game and thinking, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I'm not there. <laughs> yeah, it started off as like a soft snow. Oh, this is cool, you know. It's not snowing too hard. It's I can barely, it's not that cold. And then it turned into freezing rain and then the, the grass froze. So every time you got tackled, you like sliding on ice and I didn't wear sleeves. So I was, I was paying the price for that the whole game. <laughs> wow. Wow. And Keenan, who have been uh, some of the biggest influences in your life, both on the field and off the field? Great question. Um, I, I definitely got to say, like, my dad and my mom. Mom been a big supporter. Pops was my coach when I was younger. Um, off the field, really, like, especially once I got to the NFL, my wife, she kind of kept me uh, pretty grounded because um, it's a lot of stress, a lot of, you know, anxiety, doubt, not really sure what's going to happen when you're not a, you know, a top pick or anything, you're kind of fighting for your job day in and day out. And that's a tough spot to be in. So she's definitely kept me grounded, um, sense of normalcy. And she still does that today when I complain about stuff. So got to give her the love. Oh, absolutely. And so you, and, and you're currently still serving in the Navy reserves right now. That's correct. That's correct. I'm cryptologic warfare officer still in the reserves, uh, I drew a lot of Nashville, um, but I'm attached to a unit in Georgia, a uh, creepy unit in Georgia. So, um, yeah, still still doing my time. That's awesome. Awesome. So uh, and, and you also do some color commentary on college football games. Uh, where can we look forward to seeing you next? Great question. So really enjoyed the color commentary. That was probably a, one of the more unique experiences. Um, great appreciation for how difficult that job is because you kind of kind of come up with stuff on the fly and react and make sure not to say a cuss word so really tough you know? <laughs> when you're in the booth and yeah this is happening but now you know i'm just you know working drilling um and we also run a uh me and another alumni um eric katani uh, from the naval academy and sports writer out of Annapolis, Bill Wagner. We run the Believe in Navy Sports podcast. And I'm glad uh, you guys mentioned Roger Staubach and from one of the fan comments because we actually have him on as a guest. I think we record tonight. Um, so that'll be out this week. Um, so if you guys are, if anybody out there is a big podcast listeners, check out Believe in Navy Sports podcast. And uh, you'll, you'll be in for a treat. And we, we do all kinds of analysis of the games, post-game, pre-game, breakdowns, all that. So you get some pretty unique uh, reflections on what we feel about the game and what's needed to be successful on the field for Navy. Yeah, we we got a chance to have um, Mal Malcolm Perry on the, on the show. Uh, it was a little, little bit over a year ago. And he, of course, he was a quarterback for Navy uh, here a few few years back. Uh, and and so that that was a that was a great interview because I think uh, Julian Leah got a chance to interview him after after a loss to the Army, and uh, it, it didn't go so well. <laughs> so, so yeah, they caught they caught him at the wrong moment. Yeah, he, he got him back there to talk to you. Though, so after they've won, that, and so can we find you? Can you find that podcast just anywhere podcasts are found, like Spotify yep. and Apple Podcasts? I want to tune in. Yep. Any anywhere you you get your podcast fixing from, you can find our podcast as well. That's exciting. It's good. It's a good idea for a podcast. How long have you been doing that? The entire season. So there's a whole season just worth season? of episodes twice a week, um, and we also do like alumni spotlight. So that's how we got Roger on. Um, but we've had other uh, prominent alumni. We just we just actually released one with Ricky Dobbs. Um, not too long ago. So we just we do a lot of catching up with the, the old goats to see what they're up to and how, how life is for them. Not the mascots. Just kidding. No, <laughs> <laughs> Man, the, the, 
the, the real ghosts don't get no love. I see, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love mascots. I don't know. I'm hoping to see the mascot this weekend at the game. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Bill will be out there. The real awesome. Bill, not the, not, the, yeah. not the costume Bill. The real. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take real or costumed. That's that's how much I love mascots. So <laughs> we have a we have a teammate that has a photo kissing Bill, the goat, the real goat. He kissed the goat at the game a couple of years ago. So and he has wow. it on a photo of that. Hope Pictures are it didn't happen, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I didn't, didn't. Wasn't there some story about Army stealing the wrong goat or something? They they went to Annapolis and, and got the wrong goat or some weird stuff like that. I'm sure that I think they did. Um, there's always some kind of crazy prank going on when it's Army or Air Force Week, so ain't no telling. I, I but I, I think I do remember hearing about that though. Yeah, <laughs> Army, y'all got to steal at least y'all. I gotta get the right right. Come on now. Let's, but uh, I'm not gonna say any army jokes because I, I work for the Army Air Force Exchange Service. But so I'm, I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> but uh, so just one more bit of business. Uh, so what's your prediction for this weekend? Score definitely gonna be a, definitely gonna be a Navy dub. Uh, you know what kind of alumni would I be not giving <laughs> not supporting my guys? Um, I think it's gonna. If I have to give you a score prediction, I'm gonna say. 24 to 13. I think defensively we've been stout all year. Um, and offensively the last couple of games, we put together some pretty good stretches in, of execution and scored over 30 points. So I think if, if we can be proficient in a passing game, we'll score some, some more points against Army this, this week and uh, our defense will be pretty stout. So I'm going to say 24-13, Navy. 24-13, you heard it here, Chief Chat first. So, uh, sure. so, so for our viewers, you can view the kiss this episode on YouTube and Spotify. Um, and, and we appreciate you guys for supporting chief chat. Uh, looking forward to this huge game this weekend. Keenan, man, it's a, it's been a true pleasure having you with us today. You're awesome interview. Uh, you kept that hand steady too. So I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been tough. <laughs> it's been tough. Yeah, but but thank you so much for spending time with us. And, uh, you know, this means so much to all of our military community uh, out there, you know, watching. Uh, we definitely hope we get a chance to run into you at the game, maybe. Uh, I'll be the only person in an Air Force uniform probably in the building. So so I won't be that hard to, to pick out. Uh, but, man, we wish you all the best in all your future endeavors. And, and thank you for your service because I know, uh, you know, you're still, you're still actively serving your country. Uh, and we definitely appreciate you for that. Thank, thank you so much, you guys, for having me on. This has been great. Um, top Flight podcast, Top Flight show. I'm um, really excited for this weekend, and go Navy beat Army. There you go. There you go. So if you don't mind hanging on after the live so we can kind of say our formal goodbyes. But, man, like I said, appreciate you. Thank you so much. And uh, Chief Chat out. <laughs>